Hey guys, today we're going to talk about um, land nav at Wrap Week. Um, just continuing on with kind of this Wrap Week series that we got going on. So, um, the first thing I want to say is, like, it's not that bad. People do fail. Um, you can go on, I think, like on Facebook the ranger school support group or ranger training page or something there's like a facebook page right and i think they always for every class they release the statistics and to be honest with you the the dropout rate at land nav isn't that high um because it's really not that bad of a course right as long as you know what you're doing and you do the basics um you're going to be successful at the land nav course it's not terrible um the biggest like thing to note about the land nav course at ranger school is um there's like ranger trails everywhere right so um if you've been on a land nav course before that like doesn't get changed up a whole bunch or it gets used often like the ranger one um you'll notice that there's like these little snail trails right or ranger trails or um, private trails that you know every little school's got one that will go in and out of like from an attack point in right to the point and then it'll come back out um so like one thing that like i noticed at i bullock because i had went to ranger school before i went to i bullock uh, one thing i noticed at i bullock at the land nav course is there's a ton of lieutenant trails right and they're like go everywhere so you could be standing at like the point here and there's like trails that like zip around everywhere um mostly because lieutenants are kind of dumb um and they don't like fully comprehend land nav i guess that well so one big thing at like ranger school is people are typically a little better um at land nav or maybe the trails are just so beaten in that like people just use them but they usually go from an attack point right so like at Lieutenantville at I Bullock, what I would see is you would have an attack point like in the middle of a road. So it'd be like from an intersection, it'd be like 300 meters down the road and that would be like the attack point. There'd be a trail there, but then there'd also be one like 200 meters in because somebody thought that that was like more of a straight line. Um, you won't really see that at Ranger School, at least I did not when I was there. Um, most of the trails are off an attack point, which is exactly how I would tell you to do land nav to begin with, right? Use an attack point. Don't try to like walk down a road 500 meters and then think you're gonna turn in and shoot an azimuth off that. It's not very precise. Find yourself an attack point. Even if you your attack point is like 400, 500 meters away, it's a far better spot to step off from than just some random point in the middle of the road. Right. So um, what I mean by attack point, I'm going to explain this, is it is a hard point on a map in which you can step off from, like you can plot an azimuth to and step off from. So if you didn't know this, surprise, surprise, you can use the road, the roads and the trails at Ranger School. Right. And there's there are a lot of trails. Now, um, there's a bunch of trails that are not on the map. Um, and then there's trails that are on the map that aren't actually on the road. So pace count is going to be key for honestly, the rest of the, just get a good pace count because you need it while you're actually in ranger school not just for the land nav course, like you need it the whole time. So have a good pace count, know what your pace count is and use it like constantly. Just be counting your paces in your head constantly so that when you pull up your map and you're taking a look at your map, you're like, okay, I need to be up. It should be about 500 meters to this road that I'm gonna run into. Um, Keep that pace count so that when you hit 500 meters, if you've not hit a road and your pace count's solid, you'll be like, oh, okay. Then you can use train association and try to figure out where you're at, but you should be pretty close to knowing like my pace count's good. This trail that says it's here on the map is not actually on the ground. So I just need to continue with what I'm doing. Confidence is key also in land now. So just keep that in mind. Like you start to second guess yourself and then you just spiral out of control. Um, so um, the first thing I'll say is use attack points. That's a 
definitive spot on a map in which you can step off from. So what I mean by that is like a road intersection, a trail intersection. I would caution using waterways because they're like, um, they move, right? Water like moves. It's, it's not great. It kind of ebbs and flows. Sometimes the water's high, sometimes it's low. I just, I would caution using water for a whole lot of things. Um, unless you're going to use it as like a handrail or a backstop, those you could probably get away with. And I'll talk a little bit about that in the end of the video, because I know it's something not a, a lot of people have heard of. Um, but first, like the attack points. Attack points are something that's like a definite, no bullshit, it's not moving spot on the map. Um, road intersections is typically like what most people use. You could use like hilltops as long as you like, you know, you're on the right hilltop. So if there's like a one massive hill in the middle of your terrain um, and the rest is low lying areas. Sure. That's a pretty good attack point, right? You can walk to the top of that hill, sh turn, shoot your azimuth and then walk to your point, pace off. Um, that's going to be my first point of suggestion is attack points, right? Um, that's what most people use at Ranger School. It's it's effective um, for a land nav course, it's phenomenal. Um, the reason is, is it's fast, right? So you can just, you can look at your map and say, okay, I can get on this road. I can run this road a thousand meters. Um, it's gonna be my third intersection that I'm gonna run into and that's gonna be my attack point. So then you can just put your map away and you can cook down the road and be like, okay, there's intersection one, got it. There's intersection two, got it. Okay, here, I'm in intersection three. Do a quick map check. Um, verify that you are at the correct intersection. And the way you do that is very simply figure out, you could figure out the azimuth on your map on the road. Like, okay, so, you know, plot it out and say, okay, this azimuth for this road should be running um, at 37 degrees. And then you get your compass out and then you turn it, you know, make sure you convert from um, grid to magnetic. Um, typically what I'll do though, is I'll like orient, you know, put my compass on my map. I'll orient it North, right? So I'll turn it North and then that road should be running. If I'm standing in the dead center of the intersection, that road should be running exactly the way my map shows it. Right. That's another like really quick way to do it. Now it's not going to be perfect. Right. So like if the map says it's 37 degrees and you convert it all and, and you go look down and you're like, Oh, it's only 34. This must not be it. It's probably it, okay? Like, it, we're talking, you took, they take a graphical representation of the earth and smash it into a flat piece of paper, right? It's not gonna be perfect. It's it's close. Um, which is honestly all land nav is, is it's like the game of closeness. So um, anybody that tells you they can like, they're so good at land nav that um, they can just walk to a point on the map um, is kind of fooling you but i digress okay so i alluded to i was going to talk about handrails and backstops right so what those things are so a handrail is something that you keep on one side of you and you just kind of walk along it a really good example of this would be is if you get to a course you can't use roads like um arslick right you can't use roads at arslick um i don't even think you can handrail there technically i think you have to be so far off i don't know i'll let you know when i go in march um <clears throat> but Say there's a road like running like this and you can't be on it or say you, it doesn't matter if you can be on it or not. Um, you're trying to find a road up here that runs this way, right? We'll get there. That's a backstop. You, but you're going to and you know you can't cross this road. So you're just always going to keep this road on your left hand side and you're just going to walk along it, right? Keeping it there. You'll know that if you don't see the road anymore you've drifted too far to the right. And if you start to cross the road, you've drifted too far left. That's just a handrail. It's just something to keep you on track so you don't have to constantly be pulling your compass out and checking um, azimuth. It's just, it makes land nav a lot faster if you can learn to use handrails and backstops. Now backstops, I already kind of alluded to this, right? Handrails, you're walking along something. A backstop is, hey, I know I've got to walk roughly 300 degrees roughly doesn't matter i'm just going to walk roughly 300 degrees um i'm going to hit a road the first road i hit i know that's my backside i need to stop 
right? And then backstops can be used for another like different way. Cause like I said, sometimes there's trails on a map um, that are not actually there in person. So another way to use a backstop is saying, hey, um, in 400 meters, I'm gonna walk 300 degrees for 400 meters. I should hit a road. If I don't hit a road, rangers never walk far enough. That's another like little tip I'll give you, but we'll get there. If I don't hit a road, I'm gonna keep walking for another 200 meters. There should there will be a stream. If I hit this stream, I know I've gone too far. I need to turn around, right? So that's like a way to use a backstop is saying like, oh, here's one. That's where I need to turn. Or oh, I hit one. I've like I've gone too far. I need to turn back around, um, orient myself, terrain associate, figure out where I'm at, and then get back on track. So that's handrails and backstops. Use those tools to your to your advantage. Um, they're very simple tools to use and I would recommend them. Now, one thing I'll say about like Ranger School, another little tip is don't dead reckon like 5,000 meters through the woods. You're going to get caught up in some draw monsters. You're going to get ripping through some wait a minute vines. Just, just don't do it. You're going to be really pissed. Um, you're going to be cussing. You're going to get frustrated. And then it's like, it's going to spiral out of control. Just don't think you're good enough to dead reckon like straight through the woods because you're not just use the roads you're allowed to use them for a reason just use the roads and use your attack points okay use that handrail like i said to your advantage use backstops to your advantage backstops can also be terrain right so like if you're Think about it this way, like if you look on the map and you're saying, okay, I need to walk downhill. Um, and then at the bottom of the hill should approximately be my point. Um, if I start walking back uphill, uh, I've gone too far, right? That's a really good way to use a backstop, an effective way while you're moving into your point is like looking at the terrain and saying, okay, I know that my point is at the crest of a hill. So I'm going to walk up this hill. And if I get if I feel myself starting to walk down again, I've gone too far. That's a backstop, right? Um, so another quick little point um, at Ranger School, like when you're you're using your handrails, you're using your backstop, um, you're doing all these tips successfully, these these tools of the trade successfully. You've got an awesome pace count. You're keeping it. You're counting one, two, three, four. So use your handrail, you get to your attack point, right? Your, your handrail is your backstops, you get to your attack point. From your attack point, you know it's um, 48 degrees in off this intersection, and I need to walk 320 meters, right? Which you're not going to know what 320 meters is. You're just going to know your 300 meter pace count, and you're just going to kind of do some gun math in your head and be like, oh, yeah, that should be another 12 paces, sure. Um, so you figure out you've got to walk... Um, you're 300 meters plus 12 paces. Uh, so you do that. You walk your, okay, you're stepping it out. You got your little ranger bead. You're like, get yeah, one, got it, two, 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 three, and then my 12 paces. And you walk your 12 paces, and then you go, I don't see my point. You know, you're looking around, you're lost, you can't find your point. Um, one tip I'll give you is rangers almost never walk far enough just keep walking, you know, go another 50 meters. Um, if you want to do like some marking thing, like figure out your pace count, you can mark it. Um, most attack points are like 500 meters or less at Ranger School, at least when I went, that's what I remember. Um, so it, it, even if you're like off a little bit, you can just run back out to the intersection, reshoot your azimuth. Maybe you got caught up in one of those draw monsters and it like just confused you. Just go back out to your attack point. Take another shot, walk back in. If you get to your spot, your pace count again, you don't see it, I'd walk another 50 meters, then start doing your clover leafing and your boxing and you know, starting to look for your point. Um, again, there's a ton of people doing it. So there's a pretty good chance that whatever point you're going to, there's probably somebody standing at it when you get around the vicinity. Like you're gonna see other dudes. You're not allowed to talk to each other, right, on the course. Um, Every class does it. They figure out their own like little ways to tell their buddies that they're standing by a point without 
warning. You know, I've seen clipboards get banged off signs and <clears throat> loud coughing. Like every class does it. You figure out your own little tricks. Um, so, um, I would, that's my point. Just walk a little farther. Pretty good chance you didn't walk far enough. Um, most people's pace counts are done on like a relatively flat or unobstructed course so that once you actually get out into the woods and you start walking like over trees and through bushes and crap like that, um, you'll find that your pace count is just a little bit shorter than it, it was when you did it on your pace count course. So it's a good chance you're, you're just not far enough. Just walk in. Now, another piece of advice I'll give you is, so say you do that, you walked in, um, you're pretty good on your pace count. You walk 50 meters further. You still can't find it. You run back out to the intersection. You shoot again. You do the whole thing over again. If you still can't find it the second time, maybe look on your map really quick and say, okay, well, here's another attack point. This isn't the best one. This one was a lot better attack point because it was shorter, but this one over here, you know, it's another 150 meters, but, um, it's a different attack point. Sometimes just coming in from a different angle, like really helps you to like see things in a different light because those, that vegetation out there, um, Fort Moore. Yeah. Fort Moore. Um, it's kind of wild. Like it can get thick depending on what time you go. So sometimes coming in at a different angle just helps. So that would be my next point. If you've done, if you've looked kind of twice and you haven't found it, um, find a different attack point, do the quick math on like what your azimuth should be, run to the attack point, shoot in, zip into it, um, and you should find it. If you don't, uh, my next point of advice is this. You only have so much time, and it's a pretty big course. I wouldn't waste forever in a day looking for a point. Unless, like, it's your last point. You're like, oh, I gotta, gotta have this point, or I'm gonna fail. Like, sh then search, sure. Um, cause you've already skipped a couple of them. Cause you're like, Oh, that was awful. Not going to do that. Um, that would be my other, like, don't waste too much time. Um, come back to it if you have time, but don't waste time. Another thing is like, you'll see some guys, some heroes, right? Uh, they're trying to get seven out of seven points. Don't like it does you zero good. You're just putting more miles on your feet in an already very long week. Just stop just get your four points mosey your ass back to the, to the table turn in your scorecard maybe five if you're not really confident in yourself get five right because you need four out of seven points it's a night in the day course um i would just get personally if you're confident which you should be because it's not a self-correcting course but there's a clipboard on every point that you need to like sign in to like it's just so that they know you didn't cheat. So you didn't go out there before you got to ranger school and like have a scorecard or like, I don't know, a thing of punches in your pocket and like all the, the lanes and the number, the grids and the numbers. So that like, it's just so you can't cheat. So you have to physically walk to every point and write your name on the clipboard. Um, on the top of the clipboard is the grid. So it's like semi self-correcting. It's not self-correcting, but the clipboard has the grid on it. So take that for what you will uh <clears throat> i don't even know where i was going with that um anyhow doesn't matter i guess uh so i guess that's my advice for ranger school it's not that difficult oh i know what i was talking about i was talking about not putting more miles on your feet get your four points Go back. Don't put any more miles on your feet. It's a long week. You've got a lot of other stuff to do. Not to mention like the 12 miles coming up. And just save your feet. Don't don't try to be a hero and get 25 points, right? Just just get your four points, move in. Um Yeah, so night and a day, four out of seven points. It's really not that bad. Use the Ranger Trails. They're pretty accurate. Um, I would say don't go to school having to rely on ranger trails because what if they change the course right before you get there they move the points and then there are no trails you're the guy creating the trails so just don't don't go there relying on them but just know that like when you get there 
they're probably pretty accurate. Um, use handrails, backstops, don't dead reckon completely through the woods. Um, oh, and then my last piece of advice, stay the hell out of that swamp. Dude, it is. You'll know what I'm talking about. You'll look at the map and you will see it. Stay the hell out of it. Like, it will swallow you. Um, yeah, just don't do it. Um, my recommendation, don't do it. Now, I'll say this. That's from experience. Uh, I was, like, on one side of the map and I had to get... I had my four points and I had to get back. I wasn't, like, super out of time. You know, I could have made it around. But, like, I looked at the map and I was like, oh, it's, like, 3,000 meters to walk all the way around this swamp to get back. But it's only like a thousand if I just walk through the swamp. Well, I was kind of like, well, you know, you're in ranger school. Who gives a sh You're gonna get dirty. You're gonna be filthy. It's, it's gonna be miserable. Yeah, just whatever. I'm going through the swamp. That was a bad idea. I should've just walked around. It was like kind of awful actually. It was super deep. It was like waist deep. Uh, some places like mid chest deep, like it was, they tell you not to go in it, they mean it. Don't go in it, right? And I'm telling you from a personal experience, don't go in it. It was not a fun and fun trip. You'll get to do some swamp movements when you get to Florida. Don't start it in Darby, okay? Um, anyhow, that's all I got for you guys today. Thanks for watching. If you have anything you want to see or any questions, comments, concerns, um, just drop a comment in the comment section. Um, I'll, I'll do my best to address it. And that's all I have for now. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.